All right, welcome back to the Take and Read podcast. This is a special episode. I had uh, talked about this episode several episodes ago that I would get to be in Israel. And I'm here, and I'm here with a new friend and brother, Moran. Uh, and I'm going to have him explain a little bit about who he is and who he works with and what God has called him to do. Shalom. My name is uh, Moran Rosenblit. I am the founder and executive director of a ministry called Hope for Israel. Um, our desire here is that the Jewish people here in Israel will recognize Yeshua as we call him, as the promised Messiah that they will recognize him as a brother, just like with Joseph, that one day Joseph revealed himself to his brothers and they were in awe. So we believe it will be here in Israel, here in Jerusalem. It's interesting that we are uh, standing in the Mount of Olives in the area of the Garden of Gethsemane and uh, Yeshua from here uh, was saying in Matthew 23, verse 37 to 39, when he saw Jerusalem and he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I've longed to gather you together just as a hen gather her chicks under mm. her wings, but you're not willing. Now, just as a side comment, why did, wasn't Jerusalem willing? Because through the first rejection, mm. or the only rejection actually, right. God revealed this amazing plan to bring the gentle people also to the kingdom. Yeah. But Yeshua said, you will not see me again, not forever, as some people may think, but until you say the words in Hebrew, Baruch Haba B'Shem Adonai, in English is blessed to see who comes in the name of the Lord. And I see that part of our role here on this earth is to prepare our people for that day. Hmm. Plant seeds, cultivate, sometimes put water, <laughs> but ultimately it's God who is doing uh, the job. So we do it through uh, the organization called Hope for Israel. And I would highly recommend this that uh, if people want to know more, uh, just to go on our website. We'll put uh, that link uh, so you can find that in the, the description below. You can find the link to Hope for Israel. Yes, and then all the details will be there. About Will they the see your face on there? Well. Uh, they may see uh, <laughs> my face uh, uh, on there, but uh, it's just important for me to say that uh, the link will tell about the ministry. We are here to talk about the God of Amen. Israel and the ultimate hope for Israel. Yeah. So here we're in the region that's called the Garden of Gethsemane, but this was eye-opening for me when we came here. You know, we read our Bible in a Western context and, and our, it's filled with all kinds of imaginations of where Jesus is and what's going on. But when you actually come here, you see how things are in such close proximity. Like we're standing here and, and just off a of camera, we can see down where the city, the old city is. We can see where the Temple Mount would have been. We can see different aspects of Jerusalem. And, and this itself, the Garden of Gethsemane, I mean, we've got an olive tree right here that's got olives on it, but this is a big area. It's not like this teeny little quaint garden. Yes, sir. It's a it's an area. And so tell me a little bit about Garden of Gethsemane, the Mount of Olives, like where we're at, so that people at home can kind of get a better understanding. Well, the, the Garden of Gethsemane is the Mount of Olives, is uh, first of all a mountain which is east of Jerusalem, just like scripture says. Um, and it's very remarkable that when Yeshua was here, he was here sit, standing, sitting somewhere on the Mount of Olives. Like right somewhere, here. He would, somewhere here. He, he would be multiple with his times. disciples multiple times. Yeah. And here there was that uh, great question that the disciples asked him. What, what would be, the, when will be the time? Yeah. And I love Yeshua's answer to them. The first thing he said, be aware that you are not misled. You know, sometimes we get caught up in the end times and what's happening and here there is a wave and there there is a wave and everybody get excited but what do you say be aware that you are not misled because many will come in my name and will say i'm yeah and will mislead many in other words what was he saying make sure that you know who i am <laughs> yeah. make sure that you know who i am and how will you know who he is how 
will you know that you're not going to be misled? You need to read the word of God. Because otherwise, people will come up with all sorts of speculation and it's going to sound like so great. And you know, living in Israel, sometimes I hear stuff that is happening on social media and, mm. and it's just sad to see our people are being misled today. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's the area, but also this area is the same area as Zechariah 14 says that, you know, when all the nations will gather against Jerusalem, when God will go and fight the nations as he fights them on the day of battle, his feet will stand here on this mountain. And something spectacular is going to take place where the mountain will split into two. I believe that everything that we see right now is going to go away because it will be uh, God will cleanse the city in order for a brand new Jerusalem to come Amen. down. And one day, he's going to come here and rule over here. And one day, according to Zechariah 14, every year, those who are left among the nations, with I, which I want to suggest are only the ones that will stand for God and will not dare raising an end against Israel. Only Amen. those people will come every year to worship the King of Kings and to celebrate the Feast of Booth, which is going to be remarkable. Amen. So this is with regard to the Mount of Olives. And then you add here a garden that in English, it's uh, called the Garden of Gethsemane. Right. But it's, in my opinion, a mistranslation of the two words, Gat, Shmanim, which means olive press. Okay. So the place is actually the Garden of the Olive Press. And it's uh, it's a part of the Mount of Olives. It's part of the Mount of so Olives. So yes, clearly this would have been a huge olive orchard. Yes, and there would have been these olive presses probably throughout. Yes, sir. And so it's not a quaint little garden like we maybe imagine sometimes, no. but it's a it's a mountainside. Yes, and the name of the mountain is the Mount of Olives. Right. So why is the name of the mountain the Mount of Olives? Not because of some romantic idea <laughs> of fantasy yeah. the bible is real and the name is the mount of olives why because when we travel here you see olive yeah. trees when you go throughout this mountain you'll see olive trees that's why the name is the mount of olives and that's where the connection to that very special garden called the garden of god's yeah. name and we read throughout the gospels that the Disciples, Jesus and his, his disciples, they spent some time up here. They this would have been time. a place where they would have gotten out of the city and could have seen the city. So there's multiple times where they're sitting here, they're looking down on Jerusalem and the city and the temple, and, and he's teaching and he's walking them through things. And so the passage that we're going to read now is that, that event in Jesus' life where he takes time to pray yes. before, before some events unfold uh, that are, are pretty uh, magnificent. And so we're reading in the Gospel of Mark. So here at the Take and Read podcast, we take, we read, and we discuss. And I'm so privileged to be here with you, Maron. So here we are in Mark 14, starting in verse 32. And they went to a place, they being Jesus and his disciples, went to a place called Gethsemane. Okay, can I stop you for a yeah. moment? And please forgive me for doing this, but when he was here, Nothing against the English name right. Jesus, but his name Yeshua. here was Yeshua. Okay. So when he was here, we should at least give him the credit okay. for his <laughs> Hebrew name as they called him here, because here they knew him as Yeshua, which means salvation, redemption. Okay. So even in the name, there is such a, an important yeah. uh, meaning, which we will also connect to the okay. Scripture that we are all right. So about. here, Yeshua and his disciples. Wonderful. Okay, very you're getting good, better. Right? You're getting better here. <laughs> uh, they went to a place called Gethsemane, which we know is basically olive press. Gatchmanim. Yeah, Gatchmanim. And he said to his disciples, "Sit here while I pray." And he took with him Peter, James, and John. We'll just go with those names for now. We'll go okay. with those names. That's okay. And began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little further, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. 
The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. So what we first want to understand is the context. So they're in this region, this area, this this olive orchard called Gethsemane. Yes. Gethsemane. 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 And he's drawn them away to pray. Uh, he's got Peter, James, and John with him, and he's asking them, please stay awake. I, I've, I've got to pray. He's obviously very distressed, very burdened. He he anticipates what's, what's going to happen. He knows he's about to be betrayed. Peter just... Uh, at the Passover meal is telling him when he's told all of you are going to fall away and Peter's like no they all will but I won't I got you I'll, I'll even if I have to die yes and now we see Peter falling asleep yes mm-hmm. so I, I think that uh, the scripture is is so rich yeah. and um, uh, I, the first thing I want to address is since you said a few times and now they were falling asleep why were they falling asleep what took place the night before? A big meal. The Passover. <laughs> yeah. Passover. So there is a big meal. And, and please forgive me anyone who um, may have a, a, a challenge with the theology of what I'm, I'm going to say right now. But part of the Passover meal is that you drink four cups of wine. Okay. Okay. The combination of having a very big meal and drinking wine isn't the, the you'll be tired <laughs> yes. you'll be tired you'll have a hard time yeah keeping your eyes open yeah so naturally they were tired and that's why they were tired they were just really tired from what took place mm-hmm. the the night before and not just what took place the night before which was the main significant but sometimes when we think about the times we think there were buses mm. there were cars they had to walk. Yeah, they had to walk. They had to walk. They had to work hard. Everything took longer, longer yeah. hours, longer time. So it's natural. You know, you are on a tour here. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I've seen some of your people kind of tired, <laughs> struggling, keeping days. their eyes, yes. you know, uh, open. So think about it that, I, you know, uh, after a big meal and after they had four cups of water. Which just helps to humanize. Like, they're real guys. They are real guys. Celebrating a real Passover. Completely. Eating bread, drinking much wine. They're going to be sleepy. They are going to be sleepy. That's why he says the spirit is willing. Yes. But the flesh is weak. Yes, sir. And it, he's not like throwing them under the bus. He's not ridiculing them. He's, he's inviting them to come and participate in this prayer with him. But it's hard. And, and he's also showing us with a prayer, which is very special, that he had to take make a very serious decision. Yeah. And sometimes we're called to make serious decisions. And I believe that he set an example for us mm. that uh, the decision ultimately is between us and God. Yes. But it's good to share with brothers, with sisters, uh, hey, we need to make a decision. Will you intercede on our behalf? Will you pray for us? Uh, well, we go over there and we pray and ultimately it will be God who will speak to us and we want him to speak to us but will you pray for us while we do that so as he's praying he's wrestling with this idea that he what he's about to endure is incredibly emotionally spiritually intimidating yes sir and he cries out lord if there's any other way but not my will but your will be done and so he submits to the father why why did he do it here that's a great question. Why did you do it here? Hold on for a second. What do we got? On the spot on camera, this is a raw olive, okay? Put it in your mouth and eat it for a minute. Just bite it. Okay? Ooh. Okay, you can... That is bitter. To decide. That <laughs> is what? Bitter. That is bitter. Ooh. Raw olive is good for nothing. Raw olive is good for nothing. But what happens when you take raw olives and you put them in the olive press? When you crush them, the best thing, the best olive oil is coming 
out of it. And what do you do with olive oil? Mashiach, limshoch, okay? To anoint, okay? I know that many people, again, will, will say Jesus Christ, but we call him Yeshua HaMashiach, which means Yeshua the anointed one. The Messiah. So, the Messiah. That's what we would say so, in English, yeah. So what did Yeshua do here? He had to crush his will. Literally, crush his will. Just like a raw olive that is good for nothing. Here, raw olive is good for nothing. Crush his will to accept the Father's will. And because he chose to drink from that cup, okay? That cup of the wrath of God, that cup of death. Which is bitter. Which is bitter, okay? Yeah. He said, my soul is overwhelmed, not with sorrow, but with actually with bitterness. Now you understand yeah. where that word bitterness came from. Yeah. To the point of death. So, so Raul if is bitter, you crush it, you get the anointing. And, and Yeshua chose to drink from that cup. So when you and I today drink from a cup, we drink from the cup of life. And we when we follow in his footsteps and we choose to crush our will, to say, not my will, maybe I want this, maybe I deserve this, not my will, but your will. And we said to God, if it's possible, take this cup, take that, whatever that mm -hmm. will be in our life today, but not my will, your will will be done. When you walk in that death of self you walk with the anointing of him and that's why he chose this place mm -hmm. to make such an amazing act of example yeah. that from this point began the the next stage yeah. of his life yeah when he's betrayed yes what you guys have gotten to participate in is Moran and I are, we're two guys that have an encountered with Yeshua and he's changed our lives. We can't go back to the old way. We have come to realize and understand that God took on flesh in the person of Yeshua, walked this earth, a perfect life, gave his life so that we can have life, took on that bitterness, that sorrow, and was willing to be crushed so that we could have life. He became the anointed one, which is what we've talked about. Here we are in the garden of Gat Shamim. Gat Shmanim. Gat Shmanim. Gat, Gat, Gat Shmanim. Shmanim. Everyone practice that. Gat Shmanim. Shmanim. You know why I teach Olive Hebrew? Olive press. What? I'm killing you a moment here. You are, but, yeah, yeah. But, but you know why I teach you Hebrew? Please. I want it's, you it's... and I want all of our listeners <laughs> to get ready because in heaven, we're all going to speak Hebrew and we want God to be able to understand you. <laughs> now, you know why I can't wait for heaven? Why? Because all of you are going to have accents and we're going to try to understand what you're saying, <laughs> just like you are with us you nowadays. Us yes. Amen. But Amen. sorry, I killed you your, your moment here. But we believe this to be true. It's not a superstition that this is, this is a very physical, raw uh, place. Uh, and if you have opportunity, uh, come to Israel and see this place it, it is it is amazing and it gives you incredible context that here we are reading the passage in in the garden and we're here with olive trees and i'm here with a, a dear brother and things are opening up so i encourage you guys to consider a trip to israel if you can but, with us but if not but if they come they need to come if you come with hope for with israel hope for israel for sure. tours of hope i just want to clarify yeah. yes that. So, and you'll yeah. see that the link in the description below and so you can find that but the, the other reality is that you don't have to come here to walk personally with Yeshua, to, to recognize that what he has done and has accomplished on your behalf, it's available to all. That all who would confess that he died, that God raised him from the day, dead on the third day, and he lives now, seated at the right hand of the Father. And so all of us have access to the Father through Yeshua and his sacrifice. And so thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I encourage you guys, if you have any questions, you can email me. I can get them uh, 
to Moran and he can answer any questions, uh, anything that he said, make sure that he gets those questions his way. Uh, leave comments uh, and engage in discussion on this topic in the comments below. Uh, again, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank it's you. such a privilege you, to be here. It's my privilege to be with you. I just want to say one last word, if, yes. you, if you don't mind. Um, it's so vital and important that you'll be reading the Word of God. Mm. Everything we said now, even the fact that their eyes were red, that they were heavy, it's prophesied. Mm. In the first book of the Bible, in Genesis, we read that, that there will be, their eyes will be red. Mm. And what are they read from? From the drinking of the wine. Yeah. And, and it's just amazing. So I, I hope, um, you know, just to strengthen what you said, that Yeshua, you, you don't have to come to Israel. And of course, in Israel, you open the Bible here on the Mount of Olives. You see that just like we <laughs> yeah. have done. But, but it's very important to be able to see the, the prophecies, what the Word of God says, uh, that God is uh, predestined before the creation of the world yeah. for His Son to be born in a place called Beit Lechem. Mm. house of bread where the bread of life is going to come to this world Amen. and and you find it in the word of god so i just want to encourage you uh, read the word of god follow the word of god from the beginning till the end take start today and make a commitment to read the bible through the year from cover to cover from when, when i say from cover to cover from the book of beginnings the book of genesis all the way to the book of revelation Amen. and ask God to reveal to you the truth from his word and you will begin an amazing journey of walking with the living God which there is nothing else that can be compared to that. Amen. I want to encourage you just like he did go take and read the word of God. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.